Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about salmon sharing and annotating learning material online. That was my master thesis uh, with Professor Orish Hoppe and Professor Mama Chati. Before going to detail, I want to take overall about the content of this presentation. I will talk about the motivation, then about the goal of the salmon. Then I will check about the related systems and some short scenarios. And after that, we will take a look on the key features and the life cycle. Um, then we will take a look on some technical features, which uh, kind of key features in Salmon. After that, we will uh, check the evaluation part, which uh, we tested DK Pro library and some front-end functions in Salmon. Afterward, we will have a short summary and some key features for future development. Once upon a time, my friend came to me and she asked me if I can help her in interactive system. She find that uh, that was a problem in one exercise and she need more learning material to solve the problem. I tried to solve for her and she asked me if it's possible to record my voice for other student. I said no problem at all. And after that she find that that was really useful and they all say thank you to me and then next semester all students also share that voice of that exercises. So they would, that would be a nice if we have a platform that have a document and all other students can share their knowledge in the same material, for example, lecture material, and they can see the document with other uh, annotations after, for example, one or two semester, then they can solve their problems um, related to a specific part of the lecture in an easier way. So that would be nice that if we have such tool that directly the students can connect their learning material, annotating in a collaborative way, which is the specification for Web2. And at the same time, we made a platform that uh, provides document unification, which uh, students can find the uh, previous experience about this learning object. So, as we mentioned, students always need more related learning material to understand the concept of the lecture or uh, exercises better. So, one of the features that can we add to the, such system that automatically the system suggests uh, open educational resources uh, links to the uh, learning material automatically. So it's kind of recommendation system that add the open educational resources uh, to the learning material. So our goal is to create, was create a collaborative and intelligent web annotation system to increase the pedagogical process of the learners. We can add the metadata extraction and intelligent tagging from the system and also automatic enrichment of the annotators by concerning to open educational resources and assist the user by providing recommendation of open educational resources at the same time. And all the students in that area can collaborate with each other and store their collaboration and 
experience in the learning environment. At the same time, we will consider privacy and anonymity of the users that if some users have doubt to answer some question, they don't hesitate to write on the application. And one of the key features that uh, we can add to such application from the metadata, we can automatically then categorize the learning materials into different classes and collections and then the user can decide if the, these collections are logical or not and at the same time they can surf into different environments which um, related to their topics to enrich their knowledge. So let's talk about some background of the annotation. From Delphi Group, digital annotation was an explanation and comment or feedback on the added text or diagram on the learning material. And but they had a vision at that time, few almost 10 years ago, that the semantic web can provide an intelligent document to assist dynamically learnings during the learning procedure. So we have manual tagging which can be done by human agents. This is much more precise if they're expert in that area but it needs a lot of time and effort. We can have automatic tagging which is done by the system. We can do the same procedure with less precise but with much um, uh, with saving a lot of time and little effort. So also uh, making procedure of making a collection for learning objects can made made easier by building a system that enable learning object from a, a existing materials from the internet or various resources to improve the. Uh, learning procedure for the learners. So there are some features that Timbers Lee, the founder of the World Wide Web, mentioned about uh, metadata extraction. He defined semantic annotation that is the process of annotating resources with semantic metadata. Here, the annotation is not just textual annotation, it's adding some links, for example, videos, audios, different kind of uh, structured data or unstructured data to the target learning material. And he mentioned about the vision of the semantic web to enabling metadata and mapping the metadata into the educational web resources. And again, he mentioned annotation. He means semantic annotation uh, is the process of mapping metadata with resources such as audios, videos, image, and extra links. So, David Sick in 2006 talked about semantic web. Um, can be a pedagogical agents that support learners and learning procedure by interacting with the learners. These agents can interact with the learners and in um, collaborating with other agents, even for example, different OER resources that like agents that can retrieve some materials and enabling the follow the content and information in an interactive learning environment. So in such system that uh, teachers can get the honest feedback from the uh, users, from the students, and they can update, for example, if they found that this part of uh, learning material is very controversial, then they can update this part and then enhance the uh, content of the learning material. Also, Stefan Titze talk, in 2013 talked about automated clustering. He mentioned that 
this approach enrich to enrich and interlink the educational data with automatic clustering and connect, uh, classification has important role to enhance the uh, learning procedure. So, to make the metadata, we need some standardization that Eric Duval had a cooperation with IEEE organization to make a new uh, standard for uh, metadata, especially for learning objects. And he mentioned that the importance of the integration of learning objects, metadata, he called long. Um, that enhance the collaboration and recommendation in educational contents. Also make a standard that other system can read such metadata and even add more metadata or use them easily because they have a common language. Let's see some impact of Web3 or semantic web on education. Baker in 2005 mentioned the creation of such well structured descriptions means standard metadata of learning resources can facilitate the discovery of location evaluation of that learning material and acquisition of learning resources by students. And Robin D. Morris in 2011 mentioned that Web3 technologies will assist online instructions in their areas of course developments of the learners and they it can support such agents can support an assessment assessment is kind of evaluation but at the same time guide the users inside the in in the procedure uh, Bittencourt in 2008 called this pedagogical agent uh, like uh, artificial intelligence uh, that sees the user and he mentioned in uh, that article semantic web-based educational system can provide such agents that read the content of the learning material and then ex extracting the metadata and information from the content from usually textual content and then from that metadata, we can make a query to connect other um, resources such as multimedia and retrieve media or other web pages from other resources with the help of that metadata. So let's go and talk about some related works. I know that um, hypothesis is very common tool for annotating. Here's annotating is just um, highlighting the text and writing comments as you can see in the right side and that we have in the public from the students or learners can talk about the web pages. It's, they use such iframe to have a layer on each web page that learners can in a collaborative way communicate with each other. So the advantage of a hypothesis is that they have very huge community and for co collaboration and they also making private group in hypothesis is possible but some disadvantage can be they don't support uh, automation for semantic tagging they have no implementation for metadata extractions and from that metadata they don't uh, support also recommendations and they have some problems in technical form about supporting uh, portable devices like smartphones and tablets. Um, here I try to annotate a part of the YouTube video with hypothesis extension you can see it's my comment another tool that i can mention is mandalay mandalay uh, is the tool uh, for searching the research articles 
and you, you can see the abstract part and you can see the manual keywords that provided by the authors and general overview and from that keywords the user can find some related articles it's kind of a recommendation but uh, based on manual tagging not automatic tagging here are for example some related articles according to a user search so um, they they provide sorting the documents and according to the topic and from the manual tags and they recommend from local collections they don't connect you to the remote open educational resources so they don't support uh, recommendation from open educational external resources and they have no solution for automatic tagging of the for the learning objects so let's go to the short scenario of the salmon we have three scenario suppose Sarah is a student uh, sorry is a student that uh, want to add a learning material she can highlight and write a question inside the salmon and in the sidebar the question will be saved she can add her friend Susan then she find the question in uh, inside the learning material and she can answer Sara promptly inside the sidebar of the salmon meanwhile in the background salmon anal analyze the textual content of the learning material which Sara added and users for example Sara can see the general overview of the document from these tags that show and she can even add or remove some tags then after confirming on the sidebar we will have some recommendation from open educational resources like YouTube in the side sidebar if so there are some cards that inside of each card is the title text and the main image that Sarah can click on each of them and preview inside of the environment if they are multimedia and and take a deeply look inside of them when we when they click on the link so we have three sections in the recommendation sidebar so on the top we have recommendation from local collections of the files from the salmon and in the middle we have a card that generates each time when they are opening the sidebar from one of the semantic tags that extracted and here we, we generate the card based on the combination of the semantic tags and make a query and ask open educational resources such as YouTube API search to retrieve some learning uh, materials in the form of multimedia for our users and at the same time they can check them and then if they think they are related they can rank them and automatically salmon will sort them inside a system so to have highly relevant metadata student here can use their uh, use their knowledge to have feedback on the system for example we provide two tags and after they reading the article they find that this text is redundant then they, they can walk down or remove it even for suggestions of the recommended links they can vote down or vote up then other users can see the vote up in the third section of uh, sidebar easier 
because we sort them according to the user ranks. You can see here, for example, this is the section that we sort the recommended uh, cards according to the user feedback. This card has two positive score, then it's on the top, then it's in the descending form you can see other recommended links. And here was uh, uh, the card that generated each time automatically uh, when the user opening the sidebar. On the top, Saro can find uh, some relevant document uh, with, according to the Salmon collection and she can compare the learning material tags that she added to the system with these suggestions and she can see if they're relevant then they can vote one time per user if they can see it's relevant they can assign it's relevant or non-relevant and this will affect our collection system that I will talk about it later so after that uh, the system also automatically categorized documents into different collections. These two documents are associated with each other. We have, for example, ontology was added by Sara and resource description framework was added by Frank, other student from other institute, from other university all around the world. They can add uh, their document to Salmon. Another scenario that can be, we call it scenario two, that Sara finds some relevant data in internet to the document that she already added. She can copy the link of that and then paste, paste it inside of Salmon, add a manually external metadata to the sidebar, something like that. And then after she copy and paste the URL, then that link will uh, add it as a visual card bar to the sidebar inside of the sorted links sections. User can pin it for the private environment or they can vote it up or vote it down according to their um, understanding and their own knowledge. <clears throat> So as I mentioned that this document, for example, added by Sarah, this one is added by Frank. And there are also two students that working on the same document and they found out in the collection section of the Salmon that these two documents are associated with each other. Then they can click on each one and go into the environment. For example, they can click on ontology document that added by Sara, and they can talk about the same topic that they are interested. Then it means that in Salmon we can find a new community, uh, with, and we have knowledge distribution in annotation environment. So they can chat, reply, comment inside of the in environment, even if they want they can make their email public and they can directly write, write email to each other to talk about the same topic. Some um, key features of the Salmon we want to mention here. So PDF core is the document that Sara added to the system and all her friend can collaboratively annotate that document. We call it PDF Core up to now. So PDF Core is a document link actually that Sara added and make annotation environment. And all other links can be like a, like a cloud and it can be like a seed that they are related to this document. We call this document PDF core and it should have PDF format to accept it inside of Salmon. 
So we have other entities in Salmon. We have user. Sorrow was user. In that case, it can be student, teacher. We have no administration because our system is working uh, with the votes and the scores. And if someone add mm, some materials that not related to the PDF or other students can have negative feedback on that uh, resources and they can um, omit that external tags that is not really related to that document and we have PDF data as one entity so after sorry adding the data Salmon extract the specific part of the text for example abstract part and the keywords and we store it as PDF data in cell and from the PDF data we talk with some knowledge extraction analyzers and then we can have some tags and keywords <coughs> And these tags are associated with the document that uh, Sara and the user added to the system. So, another entities that we have is visual cards that in the sidebar we made a visual card for open educational resources and other, it, it, it can be manually generated or automatically generated by the system and they have three specific parts image title and short descriptions annotation data is all data about highlighting on the PDF core about editing semantic tags output like dislike comments and reply includes all these data and PDF core metadata is um, include PDF data that we mentioned before this PDF data these tags and some specific part of the document and after uh, it can be also include some manual metadata that user added some external tags or links can enrich the metadata of the PDF core so we have approved visual cars after having feedback on the visual cars we will have these entities uh, it can be generated from manual or automatic visual cars and from the metadata of PDF core we make collections collections are auto generated categories and there are a set of PDF cores that they have relative similarity with each other in Salmon and the collection contains at least just one PDF core and, and it includes uh, its own metadata so collection metadata is the metadata of the first PDF core that shaped that collection and as we mentioned, metadata of PDF core was the sum specific part of the document text and the semantic text. So the collection metadata is the that previous entity, this one, PDF data, and the tags of the PDF course. And if other PDF cores added to these collections, and the next step just their tags can be included into that collection so then we can make a completely new scenario with all these entities so a student can add a new PDF course the semantic tags will be extracted from the content of the PDF core and user can see according to the content um, if the tags are related or not and they can have a very short description of the document 
just by looking on the semantic tags. At the same time, as I mentioned, the system extracts some uh, specific part of the text and then we can uh, connect these tags and that specific parts uh, together and shape the query and talk with other open educational servers to retrieve some related material usually YouTube with use, WMO with use or possible in Selma um, to make a uh, visual cards so they and the user can feedback on that the YouTube videos and watch inside of the environment after having feedback on these visual cards we have sorted links here it also can be the part of the metadata of the PDF core and after that we will have uh, more specific metadata and from that metadata we will extract some tags and description and as I mentioned we shape the topic from the from the tags and the specific part of the text and topic I mean the collection if so, if another user add another PDF core, then we will have such entities. Then we will make uh, new metadata for that document. We call it PDF core, and then if from point of view of uh, if 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 these two PDF cores are associated according to our algorithms, then they can uh, connect together and this PDF core can also assign to this topic so we compare the metadata of this PDF core and also the metadata of the collection we compare these two and then we decide if this one is related to this topic or not So suppose there is another metadata from another document but it's not related then we will shape a new collection from that metadata and if we have more PDF core that associated with our previous collection collection number three then they all belong to one topic altogether add to the same collection and user can see in the sidebar also the PDF core that as a recommendation into, into the sidebar another PDF core that is already in the same topic can recommend to the user so at the end our goal was to showing the external link of the different PDF cores but if they are proved to be in one collection as a recommendation so um, that was the entities of the salmon in detail some specific key features was that if the user add external link such complex web page we extract the title main image and main description and we use mercury web parser to achieve this goal and shape our visual cards here is a life cycle of the salmon um, the we have data acquisition, then analyzing, and then generating metadata, 
After finding metadata, we will shape the collection and the topic and then recommend the different learning materials from topic, also from, uh, from the open educational resources to the user and then user can have a feedback on the uh, provided visual cards and then after feedback we'll have new metadata and new data acquisition and this loop is continuing so let's go into detail so data acquisition we extract the PDF text from the PDF web or URL and then we have semantic analyzing we use open Kali to analyze that extracted part and then we generate the semantic text and show in the UI uh, these tags to the user so we will make a new data metadata for each document from the abstract part from manual tag from the authors plus our semantic tags that we can be filtered from the user anytime in non situational procedure and we add some related links uh, and annotation to enrich our metadata for that special PDF core from these metadata we can shape a new collection but we just include abstract manual tags and semantic tags for shaping the met uh, for shaping our collections so suppose we added new pdf core we have no collection this is the first pdf core that added to salmon and from this metadata we make a collection here this is the same pdf core with 100 percentage similarity at the beginning and the collection metadata is exactly same as the this first pdf core metadata suppose we have already three collection in our system we want to find out the similarity of the metadata of this PDF core and these collections uh, with some methods from now we this current version of the salmon using DK pro algorithm we test with greedy string tiling and cosine similarity we will go and explain uh, we will go and explain in evaluation part in detail so this PDF core and this collection has over 40 percent similarity and this is our threshold suppose it's our threshold that's set it by salmon and if it's over that then this we will assign this PDF core to this collection for this one that was not a uh, over our uh, threshold then it's not include and assigned but here is more than uh, 60 and uh, more than 40 percentage then you can see this PDF core is added in the middle and we sort immediately according to the percentage inside of our database so here is the layout uh, you can see in detail when you run the Salmon, we will provide also simple search for our collections. In the demo video, you can find it. So, another step in Salmon lifecycle is the recommendation. We just support directly content based filtering that treats its user, user in the independently and, and uh, it only extract the information from the document that means uh, PDF core and from the metadata we, uh, we will recommend some visual cards to the user but the user also can uh, 
have feedback on that visual card and other users that they all possibly have the same interest can see the feedback immediately on the environment and on commendation visual cards so suppose this is the environment one environment that shape from PDF core this is our sidebar we have visual cards so how we feed the visual card from different open educational resources they get the metadata from the system and then generate some visual cards and our system will sort them in the sort file and after user feedback on them and system will sort it and store it with their score into the database we have such a human in the loop that they can dynamically change their ideas and add new cards uh, to the system at the same time they can change the tags and metadata then the query will be different and this gonna be kind of dynamic changing sidebar so here our sidebar it as I mentioned in scenario it's short, sorted by the user feedback is on the top of the sidebar is the recommended PDF course from the same collection and this is the user can compare the tags and say if they are relevant or not relevant and here's the topic name velocity uh, dispersion uh, from the collection this is the name of the collection that automatically generate in the local correction recommendation section okay and you can see the demo on two videos that I will uh, mm, put them on the YouTube I will share the link at the end so another key features that we consider in Salmon to avoid duplication there's a duplication problem in open educational uh, open annotation tools that anyone can add the same learning material and have different communities different colonies without having uh, knowledge distribution this is the problem that the communities cannot find each other even they are working on the same document there is no communication mechanism to connect and collaborate people who have worked on the document until now even some people can share their experience on their document but other people if they cannot find this environment they cannot see and use their experience and on current tools there is no document unification that understand this document should be unique in system uh, they have multiple same document in their database so the method that we use to detect the learning document and guide to the user to the collaborative environment which is already exists suppose the professor add lecture material as the PDF core in uh, Salmo then we extract the text and filter a part of the text this is just part of the PDF core for example abstract part or introduction part then from that part we generate a hash key with SHA-256 is a function from uh, hashing function that available in Java that we made a hash key from it and then we store this 
hash key that associated with this PDF core into the database. We want to make this document unique in our system, even it, if it has different URL from different server even. So another user want to add same PDF core from her local server. She, she want to add this document, but the system detect generate the hash key and find that this hash keys already exist in the database and then the system will reject to add this new PDF core. Then we show the warning to the student that this environment for this PDF core is already exist that added by this user for example five months ago and these are the people that already share their knowledge and, and comment and highlighting this document before you. And she can join and talk with other people who work on the same document. <laughs> so I want to briefly talk about the architecture and technical features of the Salmon. We made a modular platform, we call them microservices. We have two backend that talk with each other. And the advantage of uh, this architecture that we separate our uh, backend in two parts that uh, if there is a problem, for example, in the Salmon API and Open Kali doesn't work, for example, server is down, then the user can work manually with the backend and uh, they can put their tags, they can work with the environment without any problem. They just don't see the tags. If one second Open Kali doesn't work, or if one second similarity doesn't work, it doesn't interfere with the front end and with the authentication part. They are completely separate and at the time of development is also easier for debugging and to finding problems. So here we have in a, these two microservices in detail. This part is our front end. This part is our Salmon API part, which include uh, Open Kali and DK Pro similarity. Here you can see it's DK Pro. This is semantic tag generator or knowledge extractor part. Is which kind of API with connect to it, uh, with um, REST API to the remote server. And we have API handler. So at the beginning of this scenario, we have this PDF core. We, we render the document for a user in the front end that the user can highlight, pin, uh, can highlight and comment on the document. Uh, at the same time, in the Salmon API microservice, we have text extractor part. Uh, PDF box uh, library from Java that we can extract the specific part. We can set, for example, 3000 line of this document should be extracted or just, and also we can extract the manual keyword by the author with this library. Then from this part, we have the hash key module and then in this level, we have API handler that talk with the uh, Spring backend. We use Spring MVC framework of the Java for our Salmon controller or Salmon backend microservice. And in the front end, we have different components that handle the interaction of the U user in uh, with the UI. For example. Uh, we have here 
component that connect to um, different resources, for example, YouTube API, that via REST API, that we can um, retrieve the documents and retrieve the multimedia from OER providers. We have also here QR code scanner, for example, that user can scan the URL of the PDF core and directly uh, we guide it to the annotation environment. And this is the frontal part. And this is another microservice API that we mentioned. This is the backend. And we also have the database. In the summary I, I explained. So between the backend and frontend, we handle with the REST API. And between the backend API, uh, between the backend microservice and Salmon API, we have RMI, uh, remote method invocation. We explain each part uh, in detail in literature. So let's go a little bit inside of the backend architecture, backend of the Salmon microservices. So cons it consists of three major components and Postgres database and Spring Server controller here that includes dispatcher servlet this is the main part that manage the request from the front end and pass it to the responsible controllers. It asks the proper controller to respond and also we have Spring transaction, our service layer and here we have DAO layer. So DAO is for data app access object that give an abstract um, to some database functions. It helps us to handling the database operation without uh, requirement of exposing detail of the database. Also it's kind of information handling capsulation um, which uh, kind of intermediate of this with the Salmon backend and the database. So here is also another microservice that uh, connect with RMI as we mentioned. And they RMI with, with RMI if both servers and modules are in same language, which is Java here, they can transfer directly the object which is faster than just using uh, another uh, connection structures like REST API. So here is uh, our API microservice. As you can see, we have three main modules, uh, PDF extractor and Open Calais, which is our knowledge extractor and uh, DK Pro, which is connected directly to the Salmon backend microservice, to comparing the collection metadata and PDF core metadata with different algorithms and then say if they're similar or not, and then we will get back the percentage. It's also in the RMI uh, with uh, in the Java object format, and then um, we can decide if this, for example, PDF core can be assigned to this collection or not. Here in the PDF extractor, we use a PDF box from the Java library that we can extract the keywords, also the text of the documents, include the title and the authors and the dates. Then we will do some filtering before sending to OpenCalle. And OpenCalle give us a uh, um, format of RDF or in the XML format or in the in the Java format. And then we can uh, we will handle this all data into the backend, not inside of the API microservice. So. Let's go a little bit into detail from the front. 
aspect. So in React, we have always root component here. We usually it's, we say app.js and all other components are gonna be called inside of this component. And it's like a tree that each component can call other subcomponents. For example, we have PDF core collection that JS, JS files. We handle the uh, collections here in this component. And here we have another child tags for collections that we put all the CFA things and all related uh, materials for the tags inside of the collections. Here we have demo cards um, that has two child for resource cards on, in the sidebar of the salmon and the relevant card. And here we have different components also. This is for pdf.js. We use that package to render uh, the document if they're supporting uh, the initial format and this is going to be done uh, with course policy that we mentioned in detail in literature and here we have different also components and in the child I just mentioned the main components here that are really uh, tangible and here we can see uh, for example semantic tags that this is the child of the semantic model that we recommend the tags to the user. So, um, but all the status of the components not gonna be stored in 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 the uh, in their own interface. We will we will check the status and of the variables dynamically. Uh, with Redux and then store the status of the whole components in global state form which provided by Redux and then when the user interact with the system then we will update with uh, update our global state here is the short overview for example this is a component when the user interaction, the action happened, then we will dispatch the action, and then here's our store. And then, uh, for example, we have previous state, and with action, we will update the state, and then we will update the component, and user can see, for example, if click on the plus button, can see new uh, amount of that variable, or visual card for example. So another advantage of using um, modern frameworks like React that uh, with adding some libraries it's <clears throat> possible to handle the application for different sizes and scales for devices. So uh, let's take a look of our metadata. It's a sample of metadata of the PDF core that we want. Our, one of our target is to enrich the metadata and in the future, when the salmon is on the server, we can make a standard metadata, for example, from, with the devil tree a standard or a long standard that provided by Eric Duval. Um, here's, for example, we added the uh, unique hash of that, which is uh, integrate with the text of the document, and we add some semantic tags. Uh, to the metadata for example that was about the physics we had binary black hole or science or galaxies we assigned it to the PDF core and from PDF box we get this title also assign this one or other manual metadata that previously added to PDF file is can be also added in this component okay Let's briefly talk about the evaluation part. We use DK Pro for our uh, similar similarity function. We call it collector agent. So there is 
uh, we test for two algorithm greedy string tiling and cosine algorithm with a standard uh, digital libraries so there are some documents from uh, archive.org that assigned to manually to specific collections that I will explain it so greedy stand for finding a long common substring the disadvantage is that the com com uh, complexity of the algorithms is O power 3 and Yop algorithm use that uh, greedy for finding uh, the duplication in student exercises and it's really good for finding slight difference of two uh, similar documents for example one user at one text then finding that text with greedy is um, is very uh, advisable these details are explained in professor sesh uh, summary of the dk pro algorithm so but we applied cos cosine similarity uh, for current version of the salmon first we calculate term frequency and then uh, complete idf with uh, that provided with in, inside of dk pro library and we shape two vectors and if they are entirely different it means that uh, they will have 90 degrees and then when they are com they are completely equal then they have zero degree between two vectors actually our vector is pdf core metadata and collection metadata which we talked previously and we test, uh, tested this agent functionality with uh, input data from standard digital library like archive.org is the formula is uh, the metadata of our collection and here is the metadata of our uh, PDF core we want to calculate the angle and degree between these two metadata first of all we here is the sample table that we want to show just for two terms and term frequency for example what in of annotation in PDF core metadata was one more than the collection metadata and after um, apply IDF and then normalization we have the length of similar length even if the length of collection metadata is higher than uh, the PDF core at the end after normalization we will have the same length and Cosine similarity is better approach because uh, permutation it doesn't affect the output and the result. But in greedy and n-grams algorithms, uh, we will have problem. For example, if we add a semantic tag at the beginning or the end, it matters for such algorithms. But for cosine similarity, we should just take care about uh, the words and separation. So here is the table of evaluation. These are links from archive.org and the yellow label, these yellow means that experts and the authors of these documents assign them to astrophysic galaxies. And if it's blue means that from com uh, HCI counter human, uh, human counter interaction. And we calculated the similarity after adding each PDF uh, to the Salmon system and then if for example we assign green it means that it correctly uh, assigned them into the same collections with if it's over than our threshold then um, they assign to the same collection all details you can find in the literature but I want to also show you summarize 
So for sign similarity, we got the three correct merging according to similar standard documents. There is no false positive means that we didn't collect documents uh, if they are not really related. It's also happened for greedy, but in greedy we had a uh, almost sing all of the collection had just single uh, PDF core, although we set different threshold but the output was somehow same and the problem of the greedy was time because of the complexity if if the mm, we have a larger number of the uh, PDF cores then we will get a problem for um, making collections Another test that we've done uh, is for the front end of the Salmon that we test different links, different URLs for PDF course from different resources, for example, from USPTO, about the patent files we add uh, from California libraries and open digital libraries of Oxford, but our target is to was to uh, archive.org that support also uh, different collections and different articles. I also test with uh, some uh, manual servers. So here is the results. You can see we retrieved uh, successfully all the documents from archive.org and we retrieved the all the tags this is a tags result almost all the tags and and we test also salmon front end randomly with uh, different links from google scholar from research um research gate or from springer they usually block um other application or other service to access that's why we had just 40 percentage and from the above open libraries that I mentioned, we had 90% successfully rendering the uh, PDF files that the user can highlight the PDF inside Salmon. And for retrieving the recommender system, that was 80% successful retrieving. So let's go to the summary. So we try to have an application to automatically tagging the learning material and enrich the annotation by recommendation. Also make a collaborative working environment and organizing materials according to our metadata into different topics and collections in automatic way. And from the user uh, feedback, human in the loop, we can increase the preciseness of our recommendation uh, and collection functionalities and finding new communities and people with share interest we have we provided unification with hash key uh, if the user had just uh, same have the link of the learning material they can find each other and uh, share the experience and also see the previous experience of that PDF file and we consider uh, privacy and anonymity to have honest feedback, to have honest feedback for um, creator of the files or teachers. As I mentioned, we have a human into, uh, in the loop to improve relevancy in collections and recommendation. And we try to handle the front end with the modern technologies for students to have application on different devices with different scales about some uh, features that we can add in the future is collaboration filtering for recommendation we can make model for each user according to the tags that they assigned and then we can suggest if this, for example, a professor would like this 
document then if they have if another professor with this professor has similar model then we can suggest also this document to this professor and another function that is not really hard to develop for next step is that if the user highlight uh, part of the text on salmon for example here is rdql then when he double click or mention that then we can generate the visual card about the part that he or she highlighted here here is the i think video that i just made it in, inside a prototype for that part and then it's really um, advisable to in the to have the ranking for each tag that um, each user can just mm, vote for each tag and when one tag is really related it becomes much more bigger and more uh, score belongs to that tags and vice versa another tags that's not related gonna be small and after a threshold we can delete that tag completely from the system and we can base the open educational resources based on the tag scores not just uh, from the three first uh, tags from knowledge extractor here is our references um, I'm happy uh, if you have any question just you can email me for further question in the technical form or in the concept please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks for your attention.